Anything interesting, Cliff? Put these on Arthur's desk, will you, hon? Sure. fainted in your life before. What was in it, honey? Why, nothing. It's empty. Look, my fainting had nothing to do with that box. I don't like it. You haven't been feeling very well lately. I wish you'd see Dr. Shell. Barbara, you go along with her. Of course. Come on, sis. person-to-person -person call to Dan Adams. Coronado, California. Attention, please. Flight 502 now loading at gate 5. Arthur Charles was an old friend of hunting and fishing days in the Bayou country and along the Gulf Coast. I hadn't seen him in five years. During those years, he had married Dulcie Demby. Dulcie was the trouble he called me about. You know I don't take divorce cases, Art. There isn't a fee big enough or a friend close enough to get me in that kind of business. I know that. You said you wanted me to watch your wife. Dan, if it's another man, romance, don't tell me about it. I don't want to hear it. Well, you won't hear it from me. I find her crying when there's nothing to cry about. Lying awake in the middle of the night. Now, this is why I called you. She got it through the mail. When she opened it, she fainted. That's all. It was empty. She said it was empty when she opened it. I don't believe it. Well, bananas? joking the day before when I said the small gift box smelled like bananas. Now the joke had meaning. Dulcie's taxi cab was taking her toward the largest banana dock in the world. 2,300 feet of nothing but banana docks on the bank of the Mississippi at the foot of Julia Street. There's $50 in there. You get my present? 
that was typical of you. But it brought you on the run, I noticed. You know, I thought it was sort of symbolic. Uh, it seems like you called me a spider once. Well, I was thinking more of myself when I called you that. Like a fly who can't get away. Hell, I'm about ready to make my move now, Dulcie. So you get me those things I asked you for, huh? Ollie, why can't you be satisfied with what I give you? Look, I, I could keep this much up, $50. Maybe a little more, indefinitely. Chicken feet, honey, just chicken feet. You should have waited for me. You killed a man, beat him to death. Manslaughter, the jury said so. Well, that's no reason to stop loving me. Barbara would have waited. Hey, how is your sister? Oh, no, I sure would like to see her again, uh, just to talk over old times. You stay away from Barbara. She doesn't know you're out. Doesn't know I'm seeing you. You know, honey, Barbara's such a pretty girl. I sure hope she can stay that way. Oh, you get me those things I asked you for, Dulcie, huh? Uh Whatever it might have been once, it was no longer a match for Dulcie Charles, that was for sure. Jackson? You're the foreman? Why? Well, I was wondering if there might be a job around here. You got a card, you go to the hiring hall. You know that. Where'd that Jackson go to? Hey, what's this? Yeah. Okay, you've had your break. Now get back to work. Thanks for your help, Mac. It's a pretty rough character. You gonna call the cops? You think I should? Well, if you do, I wouldn't be here when they get here. You know, you handle yourself pretty good. How'd I work, huh? Well, I can't go to the hiring hall. I just thought there might be something, a few bucks. Broke? Not the first time in my life. <laughs> Where are you from? Down yonder. Well, this is about as far down yonder as you can get. Now, come on, my landlady packs a big lunch. You're in trouble with the law. Long story. Tell you about it sometime. Hey, but if the law's hot on your tail, you better tell me about it now and stay away from me. It could fall up something I got cookie and I can't afford it. Not real hot. When I pull this thing off, no more unloading banana boats for Arlie Ferguson again, ever. Do your stomach stand that kind of action? Maybe the thing can use another guy. Nope. Not interested. How do you know you're not interested? Oh, well, one, you don't want any truck for the law, so that means it's slightly illegal. Two, if you told me about it in such short acquaintance, too many people know about it to make it safe. Well, I'm not about to give you any details. And I like a careful guy. You haven't heard my third reason. I don't like any operation that's got a dame mixed up in it. That I learned the hard way. I hope you were making a wild guess. Nope. 
outside. I saw you talking to a chick, a real pretty chick. Didn't look like he was passing the time of day. You think she's pretty now, huh? Now you should have seen her when she was a kid. Is she in on this project? She, Mac, is my insurance. You didn't answer my question. Who are you to ask questions? Look, you see what you can do about getting me a job loading bananas. That's my speed these days. Let's talk about other days, huh? Hey, no kidding. This thing can use the right guy. I had a job once in a nice plant. What do you mean this dame's your insurance? What do you mean you had a job at a nice plant? Told the cops. Swear, I didn't know it was hot ice. Dan is a friend, not just a detective. But he told you I met a man. I didn't want this job, Mrs. Charles. He told me he wouldn't report it to me if you met another man. But he did. He said it wasn't much of a man. Now, he's worried, too. Oh, well. I'm glad it's all over. I don't have to carry it alone anymore. Blackmail? You'd never make it stand up as such in court. Nobody's going to court, honey. Who is this man? I tell you that and I lose you. You said it wasn't romance. Oh, it isn't, Arthur. It isn't. But... I was married to him when I was a kid. And I didn't tell you. I should have told you, I know. But there's a moment for telling things like that. You let it go by. And then it's, it's too late. You still married to him? No. I divorced him when he, when he was in jail up north. You wanted a church ceremony. Well, that's why I insisted on a civil ceremony. I'm truly sorry, Arthur. You can get a divorce for fraud. I know that. And I can't blame you. I don't want a divorce. Oh. I wish you told me. You gave him an envelope down at the dock. I, I wanted to keep him away from Barbara and you. He was always after Barbara, even when we were married. When he came to town a year ago, I felt sorry for him. Like you feel sorry for a sick animal. And I gave him some money. I didn't admit to myself even that it was blackmail. He promised he'd leave town, but he didn't. Since then, it's been... more money. And that's all. He wants you to help him. Do what? Well, Tell me, honey. He wants the key to the store and the combination to the vault. <laughs> I don't want to go to the police, Dan. I don't want to parade Dulcie's troubles in the newspapers. If you go to the police, he'll kill you. Or if I don't take him the things he's asked for. He doesn't sound like the type of man that would hurt anyone, except a woman. I'll take my chances. I saw him kill a man once, with his fists. Oh, what am I going to do, Mr. Adams? I just want to be rid of him. Well, you're going to take him the key and the combination of the vault. Here's the key to the store. And the vault combination. Uh, 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 don't run away. There are a couple of other details. What? Friday. Now, you forget to take the cash to the bank, or say you got there too late and the bank was closed. All right. Busy? Oh, no. Come on in, Dan. I got company. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, Dan, this is Dulcie. Well, don't you remember her? Yeah, I do. We haven't met. Well, what's on your mind? I got in touch with a fellow. Oh, it's okay. You can talk, uh, we're in business. <laughs> you can handle the merchandise. Well, good, swell. Uh, Dan's gonna help me out on this job and, uh, handle the hot merchandise for me. He's had experience in that line. I've had experience with dames in on jobs before, too, and I don't like it. You talk a lot, Ollie. 
Now get rid of her so we can talk, or count me out. Dad, I like you very much, beautiful. And I need him more right now than I do you. On your horse. <laughs> Boy, you're an edgy guy. Now, this is the safest job you've ever been cut in on. When? Friday night after closing. She's going to forget to take the cash to the bank. What time do we meet? Eight o'clock here. The door will be open. I'll see you. Come out now. See the guy? Yes. Yeah, but you're sure he's not a cop? No, he's a friend of Arthur's. I heard him talking. They won't go to the police because of Dulcie. Dear Dulcie. Oh, she's double crossing you. I'll take care of that. We got what we wanted the key and the combination. I can't stand her being around you. I have the feeling that you still want her. I've waited a long time for you. How long do you think my friend Dan will wait? Friday night, huh? Honey, let's not wait. Once you get the money, let's keep right on going. Well, not even stop to say goodbye to dear Dulcie or Mr. Charles? Now, would that be polite? Not even dear Dulcie. Dan wants to call in the police. Well, this Ollie character is playing it too relaxed. I'm worried about him. I thought it was decided we weren't going to tell the police. Why not? Ollie's got no hold over you now, nothing to talk about. You told your husband you were married. Or is there more? No, Dan, that's all there is to tell. I didn't mean to get rough about it. Ollie will keep his word. If anything goes wrong, he'll go after Arthur or Barbara. I know him that well. He won't be where he can go after anybody except a cellmate. He won't get away with very much. There won't be a lot of cash or jewelry in the vault. It isn't the amount. You let him get away with anything, you're simply paying blackmail, the same as Dulcie did. You'll never get rid of him. Nan's right. Do what you think is best. I did. A friend in the department, Captain Henry, is going to stake out the store. Now, you close up at the regular time and leave the alarm off. He let himself in. I hope nothing goes wrong. Don't worry, nothing will. It's seven o'clock. I lock up. I'll do it, Barbie. Would you take these things, please? We were closing. Then we're just in time. We've got a little present to pick up. Arthur! Take it to the back, Red. A uh, little change in plans. So we have to catch a train. Why, hello, Barbara. Long time no see. Hi, Ollie. You don't need the gun. You hear that, Red? We don't need the gun. Hi, Arthur. I'm Ollie. You know, it's nice to meet you at last. Uh, we're sort of brother-in-laws. He was wise in bringing a hoodlum along, Dulcie. I would like to kill him. <laughs> well, why is him coming early, too, hey, Arthur? Well, let's knock off the gab with the in-laws, Ollie, shall we? Yeah, okay. Hey, Red, the tape's good. I wonder how much we'd have been here if we'd have gotten here uh, later. Okay, friends and relations, into the vault. You wouldn't put us in there. We wouldn't live two hours. Don't do it, Ollie. They would die. Be a hero. No, Ollie, I won't let you. Well, you're the one person I figured to be on my side. I am. I always will be. Barbara. I love him. I'm not ashamed of it. But I'm not going to let him kill anybody. I was afraid of that, Barbara. You know, I wondered about you, just how far you'd go. Inside. Move! Now that just leaves one to take care of. And with him, we gotta be careful. Ollie!
Sandra, Dan. Well, I thought I was a little early. Now I think I was late. The door was open. A couple of other things uh, not quite right. You stay there. I'm going to call Mr. and Mrs. Charles and have them get back down here. Hi. Sorry I'm late. You ready? Warned you not to cross me, Ollie. Hold it! Right where you're at. I don't think this two-bit dick even knew we had him pegged. Well, he will when we get him down to the dock. Now, I'll take that gun you're packing. And the loot. trying to find them, will you? And the sister. Oh, wait a minute, Chris. What time did you get there? Thanks. That store was open when you hit it. It had to be. What happened to the owners? They're in the vault. Ollie's got the combination. Shut up, Red! The combination. I hope they're dead. But you think again. This time it isn't manslaughter, it's murder. Barbara, I've got her bags already packed. She'll know what I mean. Right. 